Hello, my name is Marina Petz. I'm working for the Austrian Power Grid AG and together with my colleagues Dennis Meyer and Georg Achleitner, today we would provide you some insights on the impact of climate year usage in generation adequacy assessments. Start with what are we talking about when generation adequacy is concerned? The question if future levels of demand can be covered at any time by available generation. In the past, this was performed by deterministic assessments, meaning only a certain amount of hours per year was assessed. Since in the recent years, renewable generation entered the European system, we also now need to take into account stochastic uncertainty resulting from wind, solar and hydro production, and also the temperature influences the demand curve. How do we now perform such assessments? We apply a probabilistic approach, meaning that Monte Carlo simulations are used in order to reflect stochastic uncertainty. An amount of 35 historic time series is used for PV, wind, hydro and load. And basically those time series are merged with a random draw for unplanned outages in order to retrieve a certain amount of Monte Carlo sampling. Each and every of this Monte Carlo sample basically performs a unit commitment and economic dispatch model, resulting in a huge amount of simulation results, where we then apply statistics which provide insights on loss of load expectation, namely the number of hours in a given year where generation plus imports do not suffice to cover uh, future levels of demand and the energy not supplied, meaning the energy amount which cannot be covered for that year. The clean energy package also puts quite some new tasks of the European resource adequacy assessment, which are listed on this slide. But one discussion out of those we assessed in more detail, namely the amount of climate years to be used in order to properly represent the system. Currently, we use 35 historic climate years, ranging from 1982 till 2016, but the discussion is up if this is sufficient in order to reflect some extreme weather events of the future. Next to that, the question if 35 years is the right amount to be used, or a subset of 10, 20 or 30 climate years shall be used, and also how to reflect climate change. What we did is we performed a time test model which consists of three nodes and basically once performed the 35 climate years but also an assessment on 30, 20 and 10 climate years to be used. And what we see is that also the selection of the years highly influences results, mainly the most recent years change the results into a way positive trend. And therefore, we said that the amount of climate years matters, the latest historic climate years should be reflected, so we should not end with 2016, but also have more recent ones, and climate change needs to be incorporated in the proper format. We thank you for your attention and are open for discussions later on. Thank you.